Welcome back. You're watching Indian Open right here on Bloomberg Queen's Live. Let's quickly run across Asia to see what uh, those markets are doing in early morning trade. Flat, uh, slight uh, negative buys coming in for China. But aside from that, uh, Japan and Hong Kong with the marginal positive buys that you've got. For the SGX Nifty, we're having a softer start out there, just 18 points under 12,107. Though our markets yesterday in Europe uh, did relatively better uh, in terms of picking up from where they left off uh, the previous day. Yeah, just that Asia is under a bit of a small cloud this morning. Plus, we have this uh, FNX party today, so there might be volatility expected. Let's see if traders are willing to lay uh, some definitive bets um, in the course of the day today. And then, of course, the GDP numbers coming out tomorrow. I think everybody would be on tender hooks. What if the numbers come out lower than the lowest range anticipated? Well, we'll have to wait and watch. It comes out in the evening. So that's one crucial variable to watch out for in terms of data points. But also, since Neeraj mentioned, it is today, today is the final penultimate expiry day for the November series. What's going to happen today, aside from the fact that volatility will definitely spike up? Namneet is joining us to highlight that for us. Namneet. Good morning to both of you. Well, it's been an exciting series. Finally, both Nifty and Bank Nifty managed to uh, scale fresh highs, which we had seen last in the month of June. So for Nifty Futures yesterday, actually, across the series, if you look at it, there were no uh, fresh positions which were created. But overall, the rollovers picked up to about 63%. Uh, and looking at Bank Nifty, which has outperformed Nifty, gaining about 6% so far in this November series, the rollover stood at about 50% and there were no fresh positions created. I think across the cities, open interest remained flat. And you guys were talking about uh, uh, the VIX. Uh, I think that's also below the level of 15 right now. But uh, looking at the options data now, um, Nifty PCR has been inching higher. And I think 1.63 would be multi-month high so far versus 1.59, which was seen in the previous session. So off late, at least in the last four to five trading session, what we've seen is there's more put trading, which has come back into the system. This is the distribution for today's expiry maximum open interest on the put side remains at 12,000. This will continue to be the support level for the market and on the call side it has moved to levels of about 12,100. In yesterday's session we did see in fact put riding shifting from 12,000 to 12,100. As you can see nearly 10 lakh shares were added and call writers of 12,000 uh, strike continued to run for cover for the third straight uh, session. If you look at the premiums the setup now the expiry looks like in the range of 12,050 to about 12,150 on the upside. So 100 point range is something probably you can watch out for today's trading session. Moving on to stock futures, then a lot of stocks were active. Uh, Equitas, fresh long seen, the stock was up about 4.5%. RBL continues to be in focus after the news was confirmed that the bank will be considering fundraising. Long positions were seen here as well. LNT, short positions seen, the stock was down 2% in yesterday's trade. And TVS Motors, which had a good run up, witnessed short covering on the futures side. And finally, the FI data, um, good data points coming in in the last three to four sessions. In fact, yesterday on the index futures, however, they created more shots ahead of the expiry. But on the options front, we are getting positive cues as there were more long positions being added via call long as well as put shot. With that, it's back to you guys. Thanks a lot for that, Namneet. We'll keep a track of all of those names. Partiv Shah, Director at Tracom Stock Brokers, is joining us on the show right now. Partiv, what's the call? What's uh, the verdict in terms of fresh investments? Go ahead and free to buy. Good morning, Devina. See, Devina, yes, certainly free to buy, but very selected pockets. Uh, and trust me, I think uh, we all would agree the fact that no doubt the markets have hit all time high. But uh, the serious question to ask is that no doubt, I think the polarization this time has been relatively less. But are uh, people happy with their existing mutual fund investments, which they've hold on to since the last three years? Uh, the answer is not uh, yes, actually. And very frankly speaking, a lot of people are questioning that uh, why is uh, such a disconnect in terms of our current investments in the markets vis-a-vis -vis the markets hitting all-time high. And the simple answer and the simple reason is that the stocks which have massively contributed, which have become bigger in terms of the market caps, are not the must-own stocks by most of the retail investors. They are the stocks which are typically owned by the FIs and DIs. But nonetheless, I am extremely bullish on the future prospects of our market. We know that tomorrow there's this GDP number it's going to be dismal. Uh, all the lagging indicators are already uh, bad and even some of the leading indicators, industrial leading indicators, they are also looking weak. But one has to understand the fact that there is always a huge disconnect between the economic data and the stock markets because stock markets is a data set of 5,000 companies. 
companies and india has lot many other industries and companies which are not part of the stock markets and stock markets are also at most times liquidity driven so let's not uh, get into the debate why there is this disconnect but very frankly speaking there are still lot of opportunities there are companies which deliver rois of upwards of 20% there are companies which are delivering growth numbers of upwards of 20% with an asset like business model i think we have been very selective in what stocks to pick in such a market the beta rally is not going to come soon so i think whenever the beta rally comes we can repositioning the reposition the portfolio but as of now i think i would suggest everyone to be little selective and focus a lot on quality names where one can easily even at slightly higher valuations pencil in a 3 to 5 year growth trajectory of upwards of at least 15% mm. patif uh, we were just doing some uh, uh, analysis of what some of the larger companies like larsen and tubro have done now one thing is to be in a quality stock the second thing is to make money in the markets right you were parked in a larsen and tubro you wouldn't have made money even if you were parked in an auto name which was under a bit of a cloud the last 3 months you have made money uh, for somebody who is hoping for a larsen and tubro to move a quality stock that it may be is it prudent to get out because of all the issues surrounding the order inflows and the size that lnt has and move to other stocks why be parked in a large company if it is not moving up excellent question neeraj and despite the fact that lnt is always called as the bellwether of the infrastructure story of our country but look at the stock performance since the last 3 4 5 years rather dismal and despite the fact the management has making all the sounds about trying to improve its networking capital cycle trying to improve the roe they also landed up doing some capital location in mindry uh, you know the things are very very difficult i think uh, and understanding lnt's business model we know almost 45% of its uh, orders comes from the state governments and forget the fiscal deficit numbers of uh, the central government but the state governments we know for the fact are really a uh, lot worse and there is no much hope or excitement in terms of lot of changes that are also happening in the state governments like andhra pradesh we saw all of a sudden lot of companies struggle there with their legacy orders same is the case with lnt now there are lot talks about even in maharashtra lot of projects which are ongoing could be at a hurdle and uh, the in, the new uh, cm has already been talking about the fact that they are not much interested in a project like a bullet train which could have been a key uh, order generator for lnt then i think one thing is simple despite the fact lnt quoting at 16 times which is historically low because historically if you see the average lnt is always been quoting at around 20 21 times there is a reason why market is quoting such low valuations and i really doubt this can really generate a lot of wealth even over next 2 years no doubt i think uh, the company is doing all the right things but again i think there are better opportunities in the market at this juncture and that's what i'm talking about neeraj when i say that you know one will have to be very very selective because this is a market where tomorrow we might see nifty hitting 12500 13000 and yet lnt being here and one would feel despite the fact that i had a quality name what happened to my portfolio nothing so again i think we'll have to go go with the companies where the momentum is there where there is no issue about the working capital getting stretched there is no issue about order cancellation so we'll have to be into asset light high cash generating and more importantly growth oriented businesses this is the type of market we are in and we'll have to respect that okay got that uh now in fact it's also a question of the opportunity cost loss so you you know by being in an lnt doesn't do much for your portfolio at this point similarly those high quality names which have momentum backing them are the ones that are doing well but lots more to talk to you about parthiv we'll just go across to our research team in the meantime to get in the sense of what are the stocks that are there in focus today aside from the ones that we already spoken about and the big fundraising activity by rbl bank we've got yatin who's joining us with more details he got us the exclusive yesterday and that came out today uh nikhil let's start off with you first Yeah, sure, we're going to be talking about BSE and CDSL first because BSE has approved uh, the promoter BSE has approved sale of 4% stake in CDSL uh, for 4% stake uh, at a sum of around 85.69 crore. Uh, the floor price has been set at around 205 per share, which impl- implies a discount, a steep discount rather of 8%. from the closing market price seen yesterday the offer for sale begins on november 28 and 29 so do keep an eye on cdsl it's a bit negative for that counter uh, jet airways there is a 
again an extension coming in on the last date of submission of a resolution plan. The date has now moved to December 16th uh, from the earlier date of December 3rd. Uh, the Committee of Creditors uh, will file an application seeking an extension of an insolvency process by another 90 days with this. And overall, the consortium of 26 bankers uh, are seeking to recover dues of around 8,500 crore. Uh, Grand News India, this one is an interesting one. Do keep an eye out on this one. Uh, it's an ET report which suggests that Blackstone, KKR, all are in talks to buy Grand News India. Currently, the market capitalization of the company is around 3,000, 3,500 crore. It's one of the largest contractors, research and manufacturing companies in India. The report suggests that the founders are believed to be keen on a controlling premium and they value the overall company at 4,000 crore. Remember, the promoter shareholding of 40% right now stands at around 1,400 crore for this counter. Last that we have is Paldi's IFL Securities where Abacus Group has bought in 2.7% stake in the counter and on the selling side you have WF Asian reconsensus as a fund set. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much for that. RBI Bank, yes, and then the big exclusive that we had yesterday. Yeah, so uh, obviously, post the market hours, uh, you know, the late evening, uh, RBI Bank informed the stock exchanges that uh, there will be a board meeting which will consider, uh, you know, a plan to raise funds via the preferential issue. Uh, remember, uh, uh, yesterday on, uh, uh, you know, you could find an article on uh, the Bloomberg Quint website regarding how really, uh, you know, uh, RBI Bank planned to raise funds via the preferential issue. More importantly, uh, what we uh, gather from sources at this point in time that the total fundraise quantum could be anywhere between uh, uh, you know uh, 150 to 200 million dollars which means essentially uh, RBL Bank is looking to raise up to uh, 1500 crores via equity issuances of course this will be a mix of preferential issue and most likelihood the preferential issue would be followed by a QIP issue uh, in order to issue shares to institutional investors as well uh, so uh, you know this would probably mean uh, a 10 percent kind of equity dilution with a 200 basis point improvement in the capital adequacy ratio so uh, probably uh, after yes bank rbl is also in focus as all of these private bankers have, have now started uh, looking at equity options in order to boost uh, their growth plans as well as the capital adequacy ratio all right guys thanks very much for that so watch out for all of those names including rbl bank parts of in fact i want to come to you on this one um, you know it, it's had its own tumultuous times now fundraising activity do you feel that this probably could regain its lost glory yes absolutely Divina. we are pretty confident no doubt i think there was a lot of nervousness on the street uh, when the stock had hit uh, rock bottom levels of 230 uh, 250 and i do recollect that the ipo had come at levels of around 225 which uh, kind of uh, meant that uh, post-IPO, despite all this growth and everything that has happened, only a couple of or maybe three bad quarters, uh, I think, eroded such a huge amount of investors' wealth. No doubt, I think at 700 levels, the stock was quoting at huge premium, uh, even a bigger premium than likes of HDFC Bank. But uh, the street does not like such uh, disappointment in terms of elevated credit costs and slippages in terms of their corporate books. And then with the scenario we are in, I think what happens is that there is always a doubt that what is next in their book which can impact the credit cost guidance. But I think the street at this juncture has firmly uh, taken, uh, I think, a leaf out of what management has talked about in terms of quarter four being a normalized quarter. They've done all sorts of assurances. No doubt, I think many managements, like say that of Yes Bank, had given assurances and they had slipped on that. But I think the key test in this market is how uh, are in their position in terms of uh, raising uh, capital and the talks about 1500 crores that is being raised by rbl bank if it comes uh, via the names of some very credible investors i think that will do a huge boost to soothe their uh, soothe the investor confidence and we are upbeat on the story because i think very smartly now the management is intentionally degrowing the wholesale book and trying to focus on the retail book which is probably the right strategy for a bank of size of rbl bank they have great credit card business and I think it, uh, one will see what happens to the valuation unlocking with the SBI credit card business. And I think there will definitely be some sort of uh, proxy valuation given to that business for RBL Bank as well. Uh, I think a lot of credible names have already bet onto it. And I believe that this 1500 fundraising will again be a round where we'll see very credible names. So we are confident on the long-term story of RBL Bank. All right. And much of the activities actually just come in 
in the last one month, 41% from those lows that pa uh, Parthi was talking about. Yeah, it's, I, I think this 41 is also looks magnified simply because of the kind of fall mm -hmm. that the stock had. Let's wait and watch uh, how much of a recovery comes in. Okay, you know, we, we will try and talk about some of the other names as well. Um, consistently, there have been upgrades on the financials. Today, Credit Suisse has done that too. We'll try and talk about some of the related companies. So if HDFC has gone so much of an uptake, would a stock like LIC Housing Finance or some of the others gain? A clutch of other conversations with Parthiv, but good time to start a technical conversation as well, our derivatives conversation too. Abhijit Patak, Director at Definite Solutions, joins us right now on the show with his thoughts. Abhijit, good having you. Thanks much for joining in. It's the expiry day. What do your charts or your derivative position analysis tell you about what could happen today on the Nifty or the Nifty Bank? Good morning, Neeraj. Yes, market is still very strong and the uh, only thing is since it is expiry day, it can uh, go a bit, uh, uh, I mean, volatile. There is a resistance on the higher side near 12, 150. So unless that is crossed, uh, one should not go long at the open. So unless uh, that will be a level I will be looking out for. But if there is a dip, uh, it is certainly a, still a buy on dip market and uh, a very strong support near 12,000. Uh, so any dip to 12,050, 12,060, like uh, near yesterday's low will be a good buy. And uh, maybe expiry might be around this level 12, 100, 12, 120. But uh, going forward, I expect Nifty to go towards 12, 250, 12, 300. Okay, the, the Nifty Bank, Abhijit, uh, how do you expect that to shape up today? Nifty Bank also has a good support near 31, 600, 700. And uh, uh, once it crosses yesterday's high, it can go and cross 32,000 also. And uh, that is looking more bullish than Nifty, to be honest. <coughs> okay. So, would there be a trade then on the Nifty Bank? Again, I will wait for a dip. There will be some dip intraday sometime. So, any dip towards 37,700, there I will see and then uh, that will be a point where uh, definitely no long on any gap up. Okay, got that. Uh, let's talk about individual stocks also, Abhijit. What are you recommending? Yeah, I have two stocks which, uh, I mean, uh, no one is looking at. Uh, in fact, I, I heard you discuss about Larson and Tubro. It has gone down quite a lot uh, in the month of November. And I see a very strong support near 1310, 1320, which is yesterday's low. And if that is not broken, I expect Larson to go back towards 1350, 1370 in the coming days. Uh, another stock which has been strong but has gone completely sideways over the last couple of weeks is Tata Motors. Tata Motors uh, can be bought near 165 with a stop loss of 162. And I expect even Tata Motors to do well in the month of December. Maybe 175 or 180 is the target which I have in mind. Okay. So those are the stocks you need to keep in mind. Uh, Larson Tubro and Tata Motors from Abhijit Patak. Well, uh, it's time now to uh, go on to our special segment, Bloomberg Edge, where Yashwapadhyay tells us about a pattern that the Bloomberg terminal has shown up on a particular stock today. Yash, what's the stock on your radar today? Morning, Devinia. So we're looking at Biocon, an interesting chart pattern forming, but most importantly, uh, the positive crossover that the MACD indicator has given, uh, that is the signal which the Bloomberg terminal is indicating. Uh, the MACD, as you know, is a trend following indicator uh, and basically shows you the relationship between the two moving averages. How do you interpret it? You go long when the MACD line crosses above the signal line, and similarly, you go short when the MACD line crosses below the signal line. Uh, now, coming back to the price chart of Biocon, and we've had the trigger uh, take place in yesterday's day of trade, when the stock moved up uh, by as much as 3% on a closing basis yesterday and the MACD indicator giving a positive crossover. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a similar uh, signal triggered earlier as well, but we are seeing this happen on the back of heavier volumes as well. So the lowest panel over here with the green uh, dotted rectangle, uh, that is the one which highlights the, uh, the volumes and we've seen a significant pickup in volumes there as well. But most importantly, uh, the key chart pattern to note over here is the inverted head and shoulder, which is a bullish uh, head and shoulder formation uh, on the daily charts it basically has three parts to it uh, the shoulder as well as the head it is first followed by a sharp down move then a uh, then a subsequent uh, retracement which is the neckline of the of the chart and then uh, the move breaks out on the upside uh, with the higher volumes that we've seen again and the macd2 giving a positive crossover so multiple factors uh, indicating that there is strength for biocon at current levels and one could go long uh, even at 276 and this has worked well in the past. Oh yes, Neeraj, it has. Three out of the last six times, uh, the MACD has given a positive crossover. On a closing basis, uh, the return has been close to around 55 or 6%. But should it manage uh, to give the, to break out from the, uh, from the inverted head and shoulder pattern, uh, we could see levels in excess of 300, 320 as well, uh, which would be far higher than the 5.5% the MACD is indicating. Okay. So about a 50-50 uh, kind of uh, 
hit ratio for Biocon, but when it does, it does really well. That's right. Uh, thanks so much for that, Yash. I also urge viewers to keep in mind Goldman Sachs has come out with a note on Biocon. They maintain a buy with a target price of 320. They are saying that Biocon is going to enter a catalyst rich phase for the next six months, which means there'll be a lot of triggers for Biocon, and if they work out, then there could be upsides for their stock. So keep that at the back of your mind. Um, get in Samit Chavan, Chief Technical and Derivatives Analyst at Angel Broking on the show as well. Samit, good having you. Thanks for joining in. Um, what's your sense, Samit? Uh, would you have a trade today on the Nifty or the Nifty Bank? Good morning, Neeraj. Yes, definitely. Uh, the bias remains bullish and any dip is a good buying opportunity. The market has been giving uh, such intraday decline since last, if you see, couple of weeks. Uh, so every dip uh, has been bought into and, you know, yesterday we saw a uh, decisive close beyond 12,000, uh, 12,050. So that's a positive sign and from here on the next leg of the rally has already been unfolded. So probably 12,200, 300 is on the cards. Uh, in in next couple of weeks, we would see Nifty heading towards those important uh, milestones. Uh, so for, for the day also, we would be biased uh, as HGX Nifty is indicating, we would open with, uh, you know, 20, 25 points cut. So that would be a buying opportunity for us. And the important is recently what we so as you know, put right as base uh, has been shifting higher continuously. Earlier, uh, you know, this series it was around 11,500, 600, shifted to 11,700, and now 11,900 to 12,000 has become a very strong support. So we would be buyer in any depth. 12,040 would be the stop loss level for the day, and we would expect uh, Nifty heading towards uh, 12,180, 12,250. If not today, probably next uh, couple of days. Mm. What about specific stocks, uh, Samit? See, within the uh, two-wheeler space, clearly Bajaj Auto has been one of the outperforming stocks. TVS Motors recently has given a, you know, a modest recovery, followed by some kind of you know, profit booking consolidation. And yesterday we saw decisive breakout happening in this stock. So it, it appears that the stock is now likely to give some kind of you know, catch-up move to its larger peer. Uh, so TVS Motors is a buy from our end. Uh, target would be around 492, stop loss 461. Apart from this, LIC you know, would, uh, seems to be an encouraging bet. Uh, it has been underperforming a Lagarde since last many months, but showing some early signs of revival now. So Elias is the one stock that we believe would do well in next uh, probably three, four days. Uh, can be bought at current level, 431 would be the st uh, stop loss. And we would expect this stock heading towards its 200 day moving average place around 465, 470. Right. Uh, uh, you know, the other one is obviously ICICF Bank and we've been constantly talking about it post Morgan Stanley's aggressive target on it yesterday. Uh, 775 is what they push their targets up on. Uh, CS also now has spoken uh, about some of these banks, ICICI Bank. Uh, you know, they've spoken about a target of 585, but that has been increased from 525 earlier on, so they're also optimistic. And then SBI takes center stage once again. Um, very positive on this one. CS, they've also increased their target price to 415. Remember, uh, it's high, somewhere closer to 373. So we'll have to see how it breaches that and then takes on the new level. But uh, Parthiv, for both of these banks individually, what's the sense? See, very frankly speaking, I think uh, what's ha been happening with ICICI Bank is that uh, they are really growing the retail book extremely well. And I think uh, they managed that book uh, very healthily. And uh, that's the key reason why, you know, uh, the recent numbers in terms of improvement of return ratios that we have seen in the bank is quite visible. No doubt, I think the wa watch list has shown slight increase. Uh, but, you know, the good thing is that, you know, the default risk is very low in terms of that watch list for the bank. Uh, CASA is also holding up very well. And whatever transmission is going to happen, uh, that's not going to happen at the cost of the spread. So I think uh, the momentum is extremely strong. And we know this is a type of a bank which has fantastic uh, subsidiaries and franchises which are doing extremely well. And uh, certainly I think there's a lot of value unlocking that they've already done and there's future potential as well. And again, I keep on mentioning about the credit card business getting unlocked from SBI stable. ICICI Bank also has a very strong credible credit cards name. Uh, credit card business. So I think all of that valuation is now going to count. And despite this rally, the core lending uh, book of ICICI Bank, which is the core business, is still quoting at 2.2 times, which I believe with the improvement and with the growth trajectory that they've shown, I think it's uh, undervalued. Uh, talking about State Bank of India, so this is a bank where everyone talks about the fact that in a normalized earning environment, whether it comes in, say, FY21 for the en entire annual year, this is a behemoth which can generate uh, profitable 
capability of around 25,000, 30,000 crore. So in terms of price to book multiple, if I were to use, I think it's quoting at 1.1 times, which is not at all very expensive. In terms of uh, a P multiple, if you want want to give, uh, I think at a 25,000, 30,000 crore sort sort of a profit after tax number with the normal provisioning, I think it, it, it's a bank which can deserve to have a market cap of something around 4 lakh crore. So next three years are going to be very exciting and uh, recoveries are taking place. We saw what happened with our clear uh, deal of SR steel in terms of supreme court ordering which is always going to be beneficial because a lot of provisioning has already been done the pcrs are very high for sbi uh, icici bank so both these banks i think will certainly do well okay both sbi and icici bank watch out for them abhijit patra i just wanted to ask you if, if uh, there's a trade on sbi for a very short term Yes, SBI. I am expecting a level of 355 uh, in the very short term. So uh, any dip can be bought with the stop loss below 330, and uh, for a target of 350, 355. But that is going to be a very strong resistance to cross. So I, I wouldn't hold it uh, beyond that. I mean, t- at that level, and only on a close above 360, there will be another trade. But uh, for now, it is about 350, 355 target on the short term. Okay, Pratap, just very quickly. Fundamentally, do you think what's happened in Z overnight could hurt? both the stock in the slightly medium term because there will be that bogey of what happens if other disclosures come out and would it hurt dish tv as well certainly neeraj i think generally what happens is after any sort of promoter exit i think the skeletons tend to come out and the buyer or whoever is paying a particular price would be wanting to discount all of that in the price otherwise z as an asset one always talks about its interest intrinsic value being somewhere close to 500 rupees uh, we have seen very similar trends even i remember recollect in united spirits uh, once vijay malya had left and post which uh, diageo had to do a clean up the clean up and the pain and the write offs that they had to take was lot higher than the street had penciled in but i am very confident that you know it's a great asset and any declines uh, from here i think should be used as opportunity to buy into the stock i think the valuations are extremely cheap and uh, this is a company which has the potential to generate huge cash flows which will take care of any sort of bad debts or any sort of intercorporate lending which are still pending in the books of z but i think the new promoter whenever they take over i think they are certainly wanting to clean up and not have any legacy issues carry on going forward it's interesting i mean nobody is trying to say i think that z is the same thing as what's happened to united spirits and etc and that 2000 crore 2200 crore uh, 2000 crore whatever the thing that they've said for z music in the past is known but what if uh, some other disclosures are made and again maybe other investors have different practices of corporate governance and they might believe that oh even this needs to be disclosed with the yep. previous promoters did not feel like that because it was not necessarily mandatory but a question of how much how much you want to disclose and and therefore maybe that's the reason why zero the last few days after that initial pop has been under a cloud and you know also uh, it's it's these all these investors are financial investors that have come in so from a strategy standpoint if you want to probably project what z is likely to do in the upcoming years in terms of any big ticket decisions that they make uh, you, you start to wonder because now you've got the promoter out you know out uh, giving up his chair so how does strategic decisions start to take shape uh, you know for a company like z as well so all of that kept in mind i mean nothing yesterday so z uh, looked a little weak in in the session but that's what you've got in terms of the asian market setup um turned negative for uh, hong kong but uh, japan still holding on and for the asx nifty we're still under by about a tenth of a percent market free open on your screen so you've got nifty 50 which is down about a third of a percent sensex which is up close to 8 tenths of a percent z and we were just talking about it and that one is down 10 percent uh the first tick but it's still a negative buy so that is opened up with hdfc bank is down 1.7 percent uh you've got asian pains dr reddy's tech mahindra bajaj finance vipro are all looking weak this morning uh asian pains also down about a percent uh, in terms of losers but they're still lesser in number your top gainer is sbi at 351 now that's up about 2% um we've got uh, bharti infratel power grid hcl tech closer to 2% a piece uh, aisha motors is up 1.6% yes bank has moved up to infosys icici bank at 511 now and then you've got a vedanta which is at 148 so uh you know aside from a z there's uh, no material move in either on the upside or on the downside a usual day of sorts 71.33 on the currency uh 
flattish with a slight positive bias in terms of strength, but it's going to be crucial to see what this does after the GDP numbers come out. Yeah, but I must say it's recovered a little bit um, over the course of the last few days. What's uh, also looking like starting off well is India Bulls Housing Finance. Do watch out for that one. Uh, I don't quite know if it will do this much or no. Could be positive. Let's wait and watch. The D-Day apparently is tomorrow uh, if the rumour mills go for India Bulls Housing Finance. Some sort of announcement expected. At least the rumour mills speak about it. Uh, what's... Um, Gone down today as well. Spin India looks like starting off week. We'll revisit these rates. By the way, these rates are not f uh, fixed and cast in stone. Eight minutes pre open rates will be erratic. <laughs> but two names that I do want to monitor one of them is Granules India. The Economic Times is reporting that a lot of PE investors, including Bain and BlackRock, are in talks to buy out the company. So do watch out for Granules India in particular and RBL Bank. Uh, the Bloomberg Queen exclusive of yesterday. And getting proven last evening itself, wherein they came out with the announcement about the fundraising. It's gained 41% in the last few days. Do watch out for this one in the session today as well. And, and then, of course, we'll want to talk about some of the other specific banks too, other than ICIC and SBI. We'll talk about that. First, let's get in Shefali Malik, who joins in with the top brokerage calls for the day. Shefali, good morning. Good morning, Neeraj. So all the top brokerage calls are with regards to the banks only. Uh, Credit Suisse has put out its notes on a couple of banks or, or financial institutions on the whole. So starting with their note on ICICI Bank, they're saying that profitability is improving, valuation still attractive, and the growth is going to outpace industry. Their PPOP is expected to grow more than 20% in two years. Market share gains likely to continue. Their CASA ratio is now um, uh, in, uh, around 47%, so that makes it the lowest fund cost among peers for them. Credit costs are likely to moderate to about 100 basis points. And the subsidiary's performance uh, has been very strong, led by insurance and the AMC business. So on the back of all these counters, they've increased the target price to about 585 versus 525 rupees a piece earlier. And they've increased the multiple for the core book to about two times versus about 1.8 times earlier. So if I juxtapose this to the link that I did yesterday, they're still a bit less than the Morgan Stanley target of 755 uh, and uh, Credit Suisse has also put out a note on State Bank of India they're saying that SBI is looking to divest around 15% of its 74% stake in the card subsidiary they're valuing uh, that makes it a valuation of about 57,000 crore rupees for uh, the card subsidiary and this will lead to 8,000 crores that is 40 basis points of capital release and add about 20 rupees to their uh, to the SOTP so uh, this subsidiary stake sale is pushing out equity dilution that's what they're saying the surplus liquidity however is likely to weigh down on the margins that's because their deposits growth has already been outpacing that of the lending growth and with this additional capital coming in there might be some bit of a pressure on the margins of the bank credit costs are likely to normalize in fy21 and at core price to book of about 0.8 times the stock remains attractive so they've raised the target price to 415 versus 370 earlier and last credit suisse has also put out a note on hdfc they saying that rising subsidiary valuations uh, bodes well for the company and the core remains attractive as well. Individual growth remains healthy. There have been some concerns, marginal inch up in the NPS of the corporate book, but in individual growth uh, remains healthy. The credit costs are likely to continue to moderate for them. HDFC Life continues to deliver strong growth with about 24% growth in the value of new business and multiples for HDFC Life have continued to move up and that stock now trades at about 4.6 times FI21 price to embedded value. HDFC AMC as well is uh, has been doing pretty well. So on the back of the strong performance coming in from subsidiaries and strong performance in individual book, they've maintained their outperform rating and have raised the target price from 2500 to 2610 rupees per share. Thanks for that, Shefali. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's with regards to banks. Samit Chavan, just a quick uh, trading view on one bank that is kind of now missing from conversations, Axis Bank, we talk about ICICI, we talk about SBI and all of them are rallying in yesterday's session today rallied. Axis has not quite joined the party as yet. Can it do more today? Yes, Niraj. In fact, uh, we, we are of the opinion that the ICICI, HDFC of the world, uh, they have already done well. So now it's time for Axis Bank to step up now. 
uh, yes in last couple of weeks it has shown those you know encouraging signs it has been consolidating around its major support level and low levels around 720 730 uh, we tend to see some kind of you know buying emerging so it's on the verge of a breakout whether it will do well today or tomorrow that's difficult to take a call but uh, probably next uh, one or two weeks we expect this stock to come out of its uh, you know recent congestion zone so 760 765 would be the breakout level but we are anticipating it to happen quite soon with a positional view yes certainly one can go long at current level keep a stop loss around 728 it's a positional call and we would expect this stock to give some you know a good catch up move to its larger peers can head towards uh, 785 792 over the next uh, probably couple of weeks okay got that Parthiv, what's bogging HCL Tech? I mean, well, obviously the stocks moved up in today's session in pre-open 11.43. Uh, but, uh, you know, is it the function of what the industry is doing, which has taken a bit of a backseat? Because the stock for itself, you know, just a, a month or two ago was probably one of the favoured picks because of its cheaper valuations compared to some of its other peers. Operationally also expected to perform much better. Uh, and, uh, you know, the stock with the bonus issue and the record date on 7th of December has not done much. So what can one expect from an HCL tech? See, I think, you know, what has been happening is that uh, whenever we see HCL technologies uh, numbers in terms of the results, I think uh, the growth always looks good, especially because of the inorganic number. I think uh, since last few quarters, the organic growth, I think that is where probably the street is slightly worried. No two ways about it. Of course, I think when they've used the cash from the balance sheet and done an acquisition, then I think it's best always to see the blended growth, organic, inorganic. But my sense is based on the last uh, commentary that the management gave, I think there are a lot of green shoots in terms of even the organic growth uh, recovery to take place and that could also run in the range of 10 to 11 percent in terms of the constant currency. So I would uh, use I think any sort of declines in terms of the sentiment uh, of late in HCL technologies as an opportunity to buy because I think they have very very credible products and very very cre uh, credible partners and uh, the acquisition of uh, the IBM products I think we are very upbeat on that. Uh, they have the capability to scale them and uh, probably it will take like a couple of years for it to scale up but i think that can really be a massive contributor and i think one good sign about hcl technologies is if i compare with a lot of its it peers uh, the free cash flow generation as a percentage of its total sales is one of the best in the industry so it's a cash generating machine and which can always be deployed well and i like the fact that they're trying to use this cash to even go uh, with inorganic acquisition bets which i see a lot of other peers are not very aggressive about so i think hcl technologies on any such declines valuations are very comfortable as compared to the other two larger peers and over a longer horizon they should deliver very good uh, returns for the shareholders all right uh, the other one is yes bank tomorrow uh, they are meeting to talk about fundraising activity and the stock in yesterday's session was up about eight eight percent up about a percent or so in today's session but even with the kind of quantum of money that they're looking to raise what is the potential upside that you see here about it uh, I'm so, oh, sorry, Deepa, can you come again with the stock? Yes, bank. Yes, uh, certainly. I think Yes Bank always stays in the news, and uh, one credible reason now that you know people are eyeing it is uh, for the fundraising, and who are the suitors and who comes on the board, and like uh, 1.2 billion dollars is the amount that has been talked about, and the management even uh, I I I'm sometimes wonder that why the management needs to talk about uh, the fundraising going upwards of 3 billion dollars first, at least raise the 1.2 billion dollars, get it in your bank, and then talk about more fundraising because I think the now, as I mentioned about RBL Bank, a lot of credibility for such banks which badly need capital. Uh, this is not necessarily only the growth capital. This is like the cushioning capital for maintaining the TR ratios. I think let it once come. I think that's where I think the markets are desperately waiting for. Uh, the talk was when it was at 150 rupees a share. That at that point in time, some capital is going to come. We saw levels of at least 30, 50 thanks to the promoter selling. So I think this bank has gone through everything and probably next couple of quarters are again going to be very keenly watched. Are there more slippages? Are there more accidents? And despite the capital uh, raising, I think what more capital they'll need and all this capital comes at the cost of dilution of equity. So ROEs in terms of double digit expectation gets delayed with more capital raising. So we are a little uh, skeptical on this uh, bet. No doubt, I think if they can get some very credible names and they can show better performance in terms of the asset quality as compared to what market is expecting things could improve but again i think it's better to stay aware this is what i feel 
Okay, we're minutes away from market open. Let's tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. First up, three directors of Z Entertainment resigned on Tuesday. The directors have cited related party loans, film advances, amongst other issues as the reasons. RBI Bank will hold a board meeting on November 30th to consider raising funds. It plans to do so through issue of equity shares on a preferential basis. Among key bulk deals, Sunil Singhania's Abacus Group acquired 2.7% stake in IIFL Securities. Further delay in the resolution of debt-laden Jet Airways. The last date for submitting the resolution plan has been extended to 16 December. And lastly, the Bombay Stock Exchange of the BSC has approved the sale of 4% stake in CDSL. Uh, worth about 85.69 crore rupees through an offer for sale route. The floor price of 205 rupees per share is an 8% discount to Wednesday's close. And these are two stocks that, Parthi, we need about a 30, 30, 45 second view on both. Firstly, CDSL. And this, uh, this stake sale might bring the price down a little bit. Is it a good entry point or would you leave that stock alone? No, certainly I think I'm a little surprised with the 8% discount, uh, but uh, if it comes down, it's a great entry point, quoting it 18 times, and we are very upbeat on such business models. It's a duopolistic nature in terms of the business model. A lot of more scope is there for a lot of these depositories to scale up their volume, and with new IPOs coming, I believe the transaction income will also improve. It's a free cash flow generating machine. They can scale up to almost 5 crore DMAT accounts without any capex in their IT system. So I think it's a clean business. Uh, it's just that the market has not really valued it to the, its potential. Very good ROEs and I certainly like CBS. Duopoly, yes, but in the listed space, only one player right now and therefore the niche premium too. The other one is this ET report, Partiv, on private equity players being in a race to buy out granules in India. We do not know if it is true or false, but the stock is reacting. Do you track the business? Do you like it as an investment idea? Certainly, I think Granules has uh, created a niche for itself in the API and the uh, formulation business. And I think what I'm liking the fact is there's now a lot of excitement for uh, these domestic-centric companies and their plants uh, by a lot of credible private equity names. And even we heard the buzz for Vocart goes to show, I think even if you're tracking the results of Sun Pharma, Lupin, the domestic businesses are now really catching up. So one is wanting to bet on India as a pharmaceutical hub. And it's certainly going to happen over the next five, 10 years, no two ways about it. And a lot of these companies will be priced based on how their Indian business is panning out vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the international business. Case in point, all the MNC companies. So I think I would not be surprised if some good valuation related deal happens in Daniels India. It's a good business to hold on to. Okay. We were about a minute 40 away from market opening. I think we've, we've solidified on the pre-open. Uh, 12,132 is what you've got on the index. Uh, for the Nifty Bank, we're up about 105 or points. So uh, hopefully, let's see. And I just want to pull up a Reliance Industries at the end of pre-open and where it stands. Because you're going to be watching out for a level of 15.77 half or 15.78 there, where it actually hits its 10 lakh crore mark in terms of market capitalization. Uh, one minute left to go. Let's get in those top trading calls from our technical experts as well. What they recommend today is expiry, so maybe look at uh, you know a, a few days down the line. Uh, Samit Chauhan, even if it's for expiry or probably a slightly longer trade, what would it be? I'll go with TBS Motors. Uh, looks good. So target would be around 492. Stop loss 465. Okay, TBS Motors from Samit. Uh, Abhijit, what are you recommending? Uh, for today, I'll be looking at Tata Motors. If it doesn't break 163, uh, it can go back to 170, 172. And as I said, in the coming weeks, maybe even 180, 185. Abhijit, what's the best banking stock to trade? Quickly, 20 seconds. If SBI opens near 355, I would like to short it. Okay. Okay, so if SBI opens near 355, it's at 346, up about a percent. But if it opens at 355, Abhijit Pathak would like to short it. Okay, uh, we have Mihirwara coming up next. Uh, take a moment to thank uh, all of our current experts, Parthiv, Abhijit, as well as Samit Chavan for joining in today and giving us your perspectives. Really appreciate your time. Uh, Ten seconds away from market open. We'll have a start, which is in the green. The pre-open session has already suggested that. The question is, can we move on higher from those levels or will we... Uh, have a placid morning of trade. About a quarter of a percent, 32 odd points for the Nifty, 112 points up for the Sensex, and about 116 points up for the Bank Nifty, a third of a percent. Banks are looking okay. Uh, very quickly, the mid cap and the small caps, because I do want to see what Reliance Industries is up to. About quarter of a percent for the mid cap index and the small caps lying flat. Let's get the heat map up on the screen and see 
if Reliance Industries is somewhere in the league of top gainers, no, it isn't, just about 0.15%. Okay, I think we'll alert you if Reliance Industries hits the 10 lakh crore market cap mark. What is doing well? Bharti Infra, percent and a half. Sipla, about 1.38%. Yes, Bank is up about a percent. Watch out for ICICI Bank to another percent added. SBI adds about three quarters of a percent. So banks are starting off well. What is, and the market breadth is almost even Stevens on the Nifty 50. What is not doing well? Hindalco. Tech Mahindra, Dr. Eddies, I don't see um, some of the other usual suspects in the list of losers, I must say, in the session today. So keep that at the back of your mind. Titan, marginally soft. Axis Bank, marginally soft. But that's about it. Very quickly, a set of stocks that you need to monitor in the session today. Uh, from mine, before I hand it over to Divina. At uh, the broader end of the spectrum, the non-index names that you got to keep in mind in the session today. Uh, one, some of the stocks that were amongst the top gainers yesterday. Whirlpool went up 6% yesterday. Uh, about a percent higher in trade. Adani Green and the Mammoth Rally continues 200% in the last two months and another 2% today. Delta Corp, however, takes a bit of a breather. And stocks which are in focus, one of them has to be RBL Bank. Yesterday, the uh, Bloomberg Quinn broke this news about the fund raise, uh, marginally lower in trade today, though. But Granules India on the Economic Times report about P investors being in the fray to buy stake or buy the company up about 4%. Devina, what are you spotting? Right, uh, so that's uh, a few of the names. What's doing well is Magma. FinCorp and that's been doing well since the last seven days now. So a total uh, of 27% in a matter of seven days is what the stock has gained. Uh, you've got the likes of Granules India which Neeraj already highlighted. Sobha is up 3.74% doing well for itself. Uh, then you've got uh, ITBI Bank which is up. Tata Communications remember so that big pop in yesterday's session. Uh, closer to I think 20% or 19% thereabouts is where it shut up yesterday and today is following through with those gains. Um, as well. Uh, you've got uh, Sudarshan Chemicals, which is up 2.5%. The likes of uh, uh, you know, Advanced Enzyme is doing well. Remember, Advanced Enzyme also in the last one month has had a phenomenal run-up already at 170 now for Advanced Enzyme. PTC India Financial, you've got India Bulls Housing, which is at 273 now, 2% uh, higher. Bajaj Electricals is up 2%. Uh, JNK Bank has moved up. Thomas Cook is up. Uh, you've got um, a Shrey Infra, which is also trading in the green this morning. What's not doing well probably is HCC and that stock is giving back some after seeing a, you know, a run up of 40% in the last seven days. You're bound to see some profit taking. Uh, that's down. Then you've got uh, Divan Housing, which is lower in the session. ITD Cementation, again profit taking after a really great run that it's had. Godfrey Phillips, profit taking here too. Budget Paints is down 1.3%. Uh, market breadth still positive, but Differential is slightly narrow, so 649 stocks advance, 400 stocks decline. Well, get in. Uh, uh, domestic institutional voice, uh, Mihid Wara, Director and Chief Investment Officer at Max Life Insurance, joins us right now on the show. Mihid, so good having you. Thanks much for taking the time out. Uh, what's your sense, Mihid? We, we, are, we are at uh, fresh highs. Uh, the only difference between now and the last uh, uh, period two months ago is that there has been some bit of participation uh, other than the 25 names which have done well. Yes. Uh, is there euphoria, is there optimism, or is there caution currently? Uh, I would still say there is a, a bit of uh, uh, caution. I don't think the the breadth is as wide as one would see in a case of euphoria. You know, So while everybody knows that there's a slowdown, the market seems to be going in the other direction. Uh, so people are still skeptical. So I think there might be some hope steam left in the in this rally. So what are you working with? Are you working with this belief that usually, I mean, so many people that we spoke to said that the market typically knows more than what any of us know. And the market is t trying to discount what will happen six months out at these levels. We might actually see or start seeing some recovery in the economic parameters as well. But earnings will definitely show up. Is that what is the base case? Uh, that is the hope, yes. Uh, you know, we have this uh, good situation in which while the domestic uh, news is not that great, hmm. as far as the you know physical numbers, credit growth, uh, all those are concerned, we know there's a slowdown. Uh, but that seems to be the situation even globally. And uh, the stance of the global central bankers, the ECB, the Fed, uh, even the Chinese central bank, is very, very easy. So you have this situation in which any bad news on the global front is being countered by federal bank, uh, uh, the central bank liquidity. actions of huge amount of liquidity. It's kind of a put. We are back to the central bank put again. And uh, good that this is happening in a situation where we are facing a slowdown because then we have some hope and liquidity rally which will sustain the markets by the time the numbers start picking up. Mm. Uh, you know, so uh, let me just, you know, talk about the external factors also. U.S. record high after record high and we 
sort of following them in a way. Uh, but do you feel that uh, you know this probably is overrun itself in a way, and and and, and the damage that happens from a setback from here could be that much more in nature and and in impact. Uh, it could be, especially in the large caps, uh, given the way valuations are. Uh, but the thing is that we are not in normal times. Let's accept it. You know, uh, I mean. Traditionalists like us who look at valuations and earning growth have been proven wrong for almost two years now. And that's because of the fact that we have a situation in which I think $15 trillion worth of global central bank bonds or government bonds are trading at negative yields. So this is not a new normal. <laughs> the traditional models are going out for a toss. And we are seeing that there is a bubble in various asset classes. But how to call the top is, is very difficult. Uh, in the meantime, we have a situation where physical assets are not doing that, that great in India. Mm -hmm. So the funds uh, flow to mutual funds and insurance continues. And we have this rally. Look, India cannot stay at 4% uh, or 4.5% uh, GDP growth for too long. I think it's only a question of time. And as long as we have this liquidity to sustain us, by the time that we catch up, it should be fine. Mm. And, and you know, it's interesting because so far, even in terms of uh, uh, fund allocation, no one's really spoke talking about you know sitting on cash a little bit. You know, in case there is a correction, then you get that favorable entry point. Everyone is pretty much deployed uh, to the hilt. So in, in, in light of that, do you feel it's more prudent to sit on a little bit of cash at these record highs? Uh, yes, but the, the thing is that there is still enough value out there in the, in the non-top 100 names, mm. or no, even non-top 50 names, I would say. Uh, because while the Nifty is at record highs, we still see the mid-caps and small-caps really trading at uh, no. not so great uh, you know, valuations. They're still 20 to 30 percent uh, down. A lot of them are even 40 percent down. So in case there is any sign of a pickup, there is good amount of value out there. So with a patient two to three year kind of view, there is you know work to be done. There are stocks to be picked out there. All right. So what exactly now strikes the eye? Uh, we've spoken about mid caps and small caps and the valuation gap starting to narrow down. Um, but is it in which sort of pockets according to you? Because you don't really characterize mid caps as sectors like because uh, yes. you know like how banking has 40 percent on the index banking does 40 percent in the mid cap space yeah. so how do you you factor in those elements uh look the, i'll just ignore the obvious ones yeah. which is consumption uh, and banking private sector banks and mm. because i think there's unanimity that th these are the pockets to be in so i'll just ignore that uh, but it's also a fact that we cannot grow at six to seven percent without private sector investments kicking in Yes. and government spending you know whether the government blows the fisc or not is a different question but the government and the private sector need to start spending both on the infra front as well as manufacturing and real estate so these are three pockets where there is still value out there these are three pockets which have done really badly in the last few years so whether we talk about the capex cycle there are a lot of mid caps out there because since we are discussing mid caps so there are a lot of capital goods companies which are pretty much in the mid cap space epc companies used to be large caps a lot of them have become mid caps, mid -caps. now and and similarly, in the real estate space, again, this is a segment which has not done well for quite some time. And uh, if India has to come back to 6 to 7 to 8 percent, I don't think we can do it without these three pockets doing well. If we don't come back at 6, 7, 8 percent, because a lot of people are saying, I mean, I, I think a couple of ex-RBI governors have been saying that 5 trillion by 2025 is, is a pipe piper's dream. We will not do that. So let's sure. assume we don't grow. Even if we grow at the current rates of growth, um, do you think real estate as a pocket does make a comeback? I mean, there are so many statistics that say that, I mean, just the contribution to economy versus the uh, space in the market capitalization is so abysmally low that it has to move up. Absolutely. So that's what I'm saying. And within real estate, given the new set of regulations around RERA, uh, bankruptcy code, and, and uh, builders have to now become more organized and more responsive to the customers, there is a structural change that has happened in the last two years. Uh, the trend towards unorganized to organize will continue. So uh, there was a statistic in the paper where I think almost a third of the builders are out of business hmm. or have shut shop in, in India, in, in, in cities like Bombay, Chennai, Delhi, etc. And that trend will continue. The large listed players may continue to gain at the cost of the unlisted, unorganized players. Would you be comfortable putting in money to work in real estate at the current time? I mean, do you guys have real estate in your portfolio? We have a small exposure, yes. Uh, small. Not, not very much significant. But this is something that we are looking at uh, with a three-year kind of 
of a view. And within the real estate space, not all of them are leveraged. So there is a <laughs> perception that all the real estate companies are leveraged, but there are still a few out there which are run pretty well and which are not leveraged. No, I think it's just that because people tend to paint the whole space with the same brush at times yes. and therefore even a good company might not get the valuation that it usually would otherwise. That's what they do. I mean, that's what's happening in mid caps and small caps also. Yeah, I guess so. Paint with the same brush. Uh, so Mihil, let me ask you what's your view on infrastructure and, and on housing and whether or not you see the residential demand picking up in a meaningful fashion. And then what happens to the feeder industries uh, like cement, uh, steel, metals, uh, how, do, how does how all of that play out in, in, in a cycle? So in cement and steel, we are seeing some uptick in the last uh, year and a half. Uh, the, the affordable housing program seems to be doing reasonably well. We are seeing the statistics that the delivery of homes is, is reasonably well. So probably the reason why we have not seen cement de demand collapse totally is because of the affordable housing uh, uh, you know, push that the government has been giving. And there is traction out there, uh, good monitoring, etc. cetera. Uh, still uh, similar situation on the structural part. Uh, but I think without additional SOPs, whether fiscal or, or any kind of SOPs, the real estate residential piece will still remain sluggish. So I'm still expecting, apart from the AIF that the government did you know, uh, announce to kind of help the real estate uh, stress out, uh, there are still more fiscal and tax incentives that need to be given. There are stamp duties in India are too high, transaction costs are too high, uh, there is no benefit of the second home uh, if, if one wants to buy a second home in terms of taxation breaks, uh, larger amount of uh, you know, uh, tax breaks for interest components, etc. I think there are still uh, a lot still needs to be done. Okay. One final question, Meir, and I'm borrowing it from the tweet that you've put out eight hours ago, which is on India mobile internet speed. But I'm using that as a segue into telecom. Uh, if indeed telcos will not invest too much but still have the uh, duopoly or uh, the, well, the three-player market that we are in and rates move up, do you reckon that is a precursor for people to get enter into the telco space now? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that if, if rates do creep up Which they in the next two, two, two three months, let's see, because now today there has been a statement by TRAI, for example, that saying that we will not interfere and put a floor on prices. So, you know, the situation is still fluid out there. Okay. Okay. Uh, but if, if rates do move up, then uh -huh. yes, uh, we were very underweight on the segment uh, after the announcement, uh, you know, of the Supreme Court uh, when the things panicked, we probably added a bit. Uh, so we are closer to neutral now against almost a zero weight for almost three, four years. Uh, wow. But if rates start moving up, that this would be a segment to start increasing exposure to, yes. Okay. Interesting thoughts, Meer. Uh, as always, pleasure having you. Thank you so much for joining us in our studios. Appreciate Thank your time you. today. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's the view from Mihir Vora of Max and, well, selectively bullish on a lot of pockets that people might otherwise not be as bullish on. Keep that at the back of your mind. The markets in the first 10-15 uh, minutes have started off very, very flat. So, it's not a great start, but well, let's wait and watch if this improves. Alright, we're going to take a very short break right here, but coming up next, we discuss the business outlook with the uh, Achal Bakeri of uh, Symphony and ask Anubhuti Sahai of Standard Chartered Bank what she is penciling in for India's GDP growth in the second quarter.